In this video, we're going to talk about model binding in ASP.NET Core Web API. So what is model binding? Model binding is the process of mapping data from HTTP request to the parameters of a action method. In this particular action method, you can see an example. The ID is mapped from the route of the HTTP request into the integer parameter of the get shirt by ID action method. So since model binding is mapping data from HTTP request to our action method parameters, then we have to know where the data is actually stored in the HTTP request. Let's look at this picture. And this is basically the anatomy of a HTTP request. We have a HTTP request like this, and this is the verb right, the HTTP method. This part is the path, or we can call it the route. And after the route, we have query strings, which is not shown in this example. But the query strings are those start with question mark, and then the query parameter, followed by the query value. And after that, we have this bracket. All of this data are HTTP headers. And you can basically see the HTTP header has a key value pair, right, the key and the value, and then another header key, another header value, and so on and so forth. So after the HTTP header, you can see the HTTP body here. And it's also sometimes called the payload. Usually a HTTP get method wouldn't have a body, right? Even you have a body, it's mainly ignored. A body makes sense for a post verb or a put verb or a patch verb. It doesn't make sense for a delete or a get verb. So this is the anatomy of the HTTP request. So where the data can come from? The data can come from all those different places that we just talked about, except the verb. Let's have some examples of those different places. We already have an example of the route. The ID is mapped from the route to our ID parameter here. Let's say that in addition to the ID, we also need to receive the color of the shirt. Right? And let's say that the color is a string variable here. We can receive this from the route. So how do we do that? We can do slash and then we can put color here. So then this will be mapped to the parameter. And then of course, we want to display the color. Okay, let's give it a try. We're bringing up our postman and here followed by the ID we can put the color of the shirt, which is red in this case. And then let's click on the send button and you can see the response comes back and displays the color red. This example shows that data can be mapped from the route to the parameter of the action method. In addition to let ASP.NET Core to decide where the data comes from, you can actually specify where the data come from. In the previous example here, when we have color, it'll automatically map to here from the route because this is the only place the color is provided, right? But you can actually specify that uh, the data has to come from the route. So in this case, you can say from route, then if the data come from somewhere else, it's going to throw in an exception. Right, basically saying that you're missing the color parameter here. So where else it can come from? It can come from query string. So let's remove this. Now let's test this. If we send this request without providing the query string, you can see that the color field is required. That is basically a 400 bat request. But what we can do is to attach a query string and we're going to say question mark color equals, let's say blue this time. Now let's click on the send button. You can see a HTTP 200 returned and we're receiving the correct message. Now we have demonstrated from route, from query. I can also demonstrate that the data can come from the header. So in this case, I'm going to specify the color is going to come from the header. Remember that header has a key value pair, so we can specify what the key is. In this case, uh, the name. Right, so I can say that the key is color. I'm going to run this, come over here, go to the header. We can add the header here and the key is color. And here we're going to say purple. And 
let's click on the send button now we are receiving the correct message the color purple comes back so this example demonstrates that the data can also come from the header and in order to do that we can specify the name of the key okay so i have showed the data come from the route from the query string from the header and those places usually we're binding primitive type of data that means like a number a string so those kind of things so now we comes to model binding from the body let's delete this recover to the previous state now when we provide data through the http request body we're usually using the post or the put so let's using the post as example we're posting data through the body when we do that we're usually posting complex type of data and to demonstrate that i'm going to create a class and first of all i'm going to go over here to the project and then i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call it models and under the model i'm going to create a class and i'm going to call it shirt and of course a shirt will have a shirt id it will have a brand name here i'm allowing the brand name to be null so i use question mark and it's also going to have a color property a size property and a gender property allowing it to be null for color i'm allowing it to be null so i'm using question mark all over the places and last but not least i'm going to have a price property here to store the price of the shirt now let's use the create shirt action method as example when the create shirt action method is triggered we want to receive the shirt that we want to create and then we can specifically say that the shirt should come from the body and let's give it a try let's actually set up break point here and then let's run debug and let's go to our create shirt method currently we don't have anything in the body so let's click on raw and let's select json we can come up with a shirt so let's say the shirt id is one and the brand name is let's just say my brand and if i click on the send button now my breakpoint is triggered if i hover over the shirt parameter here i can see that i actually received the data shirt id is one um, my brand name is my brand and everything else is the initial value so now you can see that we are able to post complex type of data through the body another place where we can post complex type of data is from the form and let's run it and let's try to post data through the form and let's run debug and let's delete the json here and instead of selecting raw let's using the form data and you can see that form data also comes with key and value pair so what do we do here we can just provide the different properties so first of all shirt id i'm going to do number two and the brand name i'm going to say your brand and let's say the color is yellow and the size is let's say 12 and the price is let's say 30 dollars so with this data in the form let's click on the send button and now you can see that the breakpoint is triggered let's hover our mouse over the shirt parameter here you can see that we received all of the data here okay so this is from form and actually the form is within the body part of the http request let's sum up i've showed you what is model binding right which is to map data from the request to the parameters and then there are different places in the request there are route their query their headers their body and their form i've demonstrated all of different places of course there are other places that you can reference but usually we don't put data in there so i'm not demonstrating that hopefully after this video you know exactly what model binding is and you know where to put data and how to use these attributes to specify where the data come from okay i'll see you in the next one